Oh my goodness. Who's ready for the Mad Zach show? Yeah, special show for those guys who at least wait till noon until they start drinking. And it's Christmas. Yeah, I got presents. How about a little Christmas in the city? While we settle into the, to the old treasure room here. Oh man, it's very exciting today. We have a new baby pigeon. Yeah. Let me pull up my monitor. Call some friends. Send out some carrier pigeons. Send out the carrier pigeons! Oh. Clean your glasses. Clean your glasses, Zach. I gotta try it before you buy it, too. Yeah, let me go get it. Cannon polish your rags for a minute. Put the cap back on that whiskey. This is a track called Christmas in the City from my the Bandana Brothers album. I'll put a link to it in the comments. Like I always do. And this will take you to the album. That I think you'll enjoy if you haven't heard from it. This is a bootleg that, uh, Krug, I see out there. Good to see you on deck. This is a bootleg from uh, when my buddy Danny had the opportunity to record the show because he did the sound. And this was at the Fountain Street Church, downtown Grand Rapids sometime prior to 2000. Um, it's Stan Getz, I believe. But you'll only hear this here. I'm the only one that's got this recording. Yeah. And it's on my album, which is still number one, you'll find out when you go see the Bandana Brothers. Yeah. We call ourselves the Bandana Brothers because we had to do a show and we had to have a name for the band. And we always wore bandanas on our heads, you know, hippies. And uh, we played frisbee golf around the community, through the neighborhoods. We'd just make up golf courses through the city. Everybody knew who we were. And uh, there's a point of the story, Zach. Well, he, he died and gifted me all the music with a promise that I should publish it. And uh, I did that. And I drove the band to number one. I promoted it. And it stayed there for 14 years. I'm very proud of it. Um, yeah. So anyway, Julie got me this. Uh, she's always getting me things. She got me this 15,000 lumen adjustable garage light. It's LED, 750 watt equivalent. Uses 150 watts. 5,000K daylight. So it's got 5,000 kilowatts of daylight. Standard light base. It's an eight panel light. Let's take it and see it. I got it right here. Plastic bag. I can use that for selling my pigeon manure with. Look at that, yeah. Oh man, you imagine how much that pigeon manure would be worth? It's got some holes in the bottom, though. I guess it wouldn't work for that. All right, useless bag. 
useless bag, cute little box. So let's test it out here in the socket on the ceiling. I got a, what I got is I got some stage lighting here. I've got these utility lights to the side, throwing light in my face. Victoria, it's great to see you guys. Jovial hats off out to fellow tradesmen and, and fellow uh, brother been on the same pads. So we're testing out this light. And I got the other, uh, it's a halogen light, like you would use to do drywall or paint finish work, you know, on the floor. It was too freaking bright. This might be the answer down here. I don't know. Let's test it out. Oh, it's bright. Okay. Now I'm gonna put it in my alternate socket. See if it eliminates. Okay, I'm gonna unplug my halogen. Angle these a little. I'm going to turn this light, utility light off. Turn this utility light off. How's that give me for lighting? Is that good enough? Or do I need more light? He got locked up. What happened? What, what do you mean he got locked up? How's the shadow? Let me, for a minute, I'm, I'm looking at the shadows on my face. I guess I still need... This light, and this light, maybe. That's better. It's just this light here shining right in my face. Let me plug my phone in before I forget. So anyway, today's show. I got some notes here, some things I've been talk thinking about that. I want to share to help empower people and uh, support them. Yeah, I'm a, I'm the jockstrap of the nation. I am supporting dicks, nuts, and, and assholes. Yeah, all everybody gets a fair chance. Yeah, and I'm, it's like a father uh, helping his children. And that's what happens when you become awakened and your spiritual growth and you hear the voice of the father and you understand that your fatherhood didn't end when your kids grew up with your uh, awakening your consciousness, it's like becoming a father and operating within that fatherly capacity in society to always offer an opportunity for understanding something or someone, a situation, people. We're talking about people. And, uh, and, and forgiving them instantly because they didn't have an opportunity to be exposed to the education that you feel like they should have as a fellow person. So, um, you know, it's about calibration, you know, it's leadership. It's not about being bossy. Um, it's about gaining control of the wild stallion you are, the wild mare you are, and focusing that horsepower. And it starts with collecting your thoughts and journaling. I'm always, every program, I stress about journaling because you're a corporation and you have a product as a corporation. Your product isn't just the money that goes through your hands back out into the world through the things they make you, convince you to buy, manipulate you, stimulate you into purchasing. You see, you, your, your product, your first product is your defense. Yeah, your defense or your, your, your personal stance, which would to them be your offense. Yeah, resisting to give me the $5 for the knickknack. So your part of your defense, the base of your defense is your word. 
Well, today's society, your word's no good. Yeah, for face value. Yeah, you got to back it up with a logbook, a jur your journal, your drawing board, your, your mad scientist's room. This is your mad scientist room where you diabolically scheme to, to become the richest man in the world, for instance. And when you're... You, you, you're, it's your source of development. You reflect on it. You get up in the morning. You take a personal inventory. Where's all my stuff? Okay, balls and wallet. All right, I got my balls. I got my wallet. You look in your wallet. How much money do I got? So, you okay, $33. So, you, you take an inventory. You're a weapon. Yeah. And you have to tune your weapon. You have to calibrate the scope on it so you can hit your target. You know, woodworking. You have to you have to calibrate your software true. Yeah. And that's what everybody's looking for. What's true? Well, what's true is what you wrote down from your notes. You know that's true. Okay. Eleven thirteen. Trying to force myself to take it easy. You know, this is your your support. Oh, it was twenty three degrees below zero and they poured concrete that day. All right. So you know, when they say, oh, Zach, your concrete's bad. It's like, well, yeah, well, your concrete guy poured a 23 below. So right there's the evidence. This is what keeps you from being sued or suing somebody else. Yeah, if it has to come to that, if, if people don't have their honor to, to fulfill their obligations, you know, helping in the garden. So... So, um, you know, being a, you know, you're, you're at a job, okay? You're in the family. You're, you're, you know, who's the head of the household? Well, not necessarily the person paying the bills. Yeah, the head of the household, they want to make sure the ship don't sink. Yeah, and that the galley's clean and you can have dinner and, and, and like that. You open the fridge and the onions are already caught up for whatever food you're going to eat all week. The meal planning. Yeah, the laundry's done. You don't have to look for clean clothes. The living standards established and maintained. If, for instance, me, if all of a sudden there's a question of who gets custody of the grandkids because the mother ends up in trouble with the court. And they come to the house, they walk in, boom. Okay, this is where the kids are going. Okay. Or the elderly. Yeah, grandma's sick and they're abusing her at the home. What do we do with her? Well, first of all, she shouldn't have been in the home unless she was so dilapidated and needed 24-hour care. But that's part of the family. She's still teaching. Yeah, biggest mistake we made was taking the grandparents out of the home and locking them up at, you know, the old Hulk home scandal. Yeah. You learned all your trades from grandma and grandpa. Food handling, food storage, all that information. The corporate America's making us reinvent. Nobody even knows how to how much water to put in a, to make rice. Basic things. Everybody's re-educating themselves on how to do stuff they should have known how to do when they were four. Which brings in the mind of the television and sitting the children in front of it for some mindless hypnotic program that keeps them entranced so you don't have to deal with them. No, those kids should be right there by your side loading the washer. Picking up the room to figure out what's dirty and what goes in the clothes basket and where the toys go. How to care for the things. They're being educated. They're being trained for war. Yeah, the war of self-preservation in a society, in a day and age where you're dictated by money. Yeah. Grandpa taught your dad how to build a house, which is why he taught you how to build a house or do car repair or whatever, you know? The families have been destroyed. TV is right there the last 60 years. 
you know, you're, you're on a job, you know, and you, you hire an entry level and you want to prove yourself valuable. Well, the first thing you do is you, you employ all your work ethics and you try and perform in a way with your coworkers to where those who haven't developed those work ethics that make them productive, uh, they catch on because you're in essence, you're competing by bringing that mentality into the scene where it's lacking. And that moves you up, you, you, you're like a virus and they pick up on the habits and they see your techniques on how you're handling the tools and the material and they become more fluent in performing. Your positive energy that you're giving out, it enhances the things. And if the people you're working under are wise enough to see what happened, they boom, they bump you up. Next thing you know, you're foreman. And you doubled in salary, tripled in salary. And people become to feel better about themselves because they feel more confident about performing their job. Because you know when you're performing, whether you make a mistake or not. And when you go through a day and you make a bunch of mistakes, if you're, if you're keeping notes and always working on tuning yourself, you're, you become self-critical. You need to be your first critic. The first critic in the world, only you know, other than, you know, the scrutiny from your parents, you, you're, you're the critic. You criticize everything. I, when I trim a window, I'll look at it. And there's always one miter, they'll say. There's always a bad miter in a four miter window or in, in any window. It's hard to get all four of them perfect. And you won't quit looking at it until you're satisfied with it often to make a judge call, judgment call, well, it's getting painted. Well, if it's getting painted, then don't sweat it. But always strive to make it perfect. But don't let it kill you. Yeah, which is the hard part. You know, your ability, when you're conscious and you're keeping notes, and you're, you're always visualizing the end product, you know, the variety of end products to the day. First of all, everybody likes to end the day with lovemaking. So that's always a goal. So you do all the little things that you can to court your mate through the day. Putting the ice cube trays back in the fridge with, with more water in them, that's lovemaking. That's courting. You know, picking up, sprucing up the room a little bit while you're in there, using the bathroom just for a moment. That's, that's courting. That's giving love. And that's how the plant of the environment, the, the, that's how the roses bloom. Yeah, those little things. And being conscientious. Staying focused. Knowing who you are. Reflecting on your journal. Where you're going. Your ideas. Don't let your ideas, your big ideas, get lost in the monotony of, you know, the series that you like on TV. Like, for me, I can't wait for Last Kingdom to come back on in April. But, uh, so, you know. And here's the other thing. When you go to a job, and it's, you're doing something that you're kind of familiar with, but you're, a lot of the things you never handled before. Like with me, um, I'm working with a guy, and uh, one aspect is uh, doing the heating. So there's the furnace, and then there's the duct work. Well, the duct work is, I've worked with a lot of basic duct work, but there's new products out there. And when you have a, the aptitude that I have, you can look at something, and that you've never done before. And you instantly search for a reference. Okay, where's another one in the room that they did? And look at that one. Disassemble that duct and see that it's the, how they did it. You know, like there's a eight inch duct hole. You got to put a, 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 a sleeve in there with a male mount on it. And then... You have the outside layer, which contains the insulation. You got the insulation, which helps contain the heat that's wrapped around a duct pipe that carries the heat. So it's surgery, it's a sur it's surgery. So you carefully slide back the outer layers to get the inner, first inner core. You secure that, then you bring up carefully the second core, 
you want to handle the insulation products and have the the knowledge that you're kicking up that hazardous material into the air as you manipulate it. So you have to handle it with care. You have to be gingerly. So to not put that in the air. Plus, it's the duct work feeding the air into the room that people breathe. So you can't make a mess. You have to be very, very gentle and methodical and flow through it. And that's how you learn, through a reference. Well, your references are first your teachers, your father, your grandfather, your whoever's mentoring you with something that you don't know about. Yeah, you look for a reference. Search for a reference. Always search for a reference. When there's something wrong with your car, you always ask for three references to see what's wrong if you have no clue. Same thing with your health, your references. You refer to three sources. Um, yeah, and, then, and, and, and all these qualities prove yourself valuable. Yeah, you don't have to have any money to be valuable. You know, the richest man has nothing. It's about having a standard, you know, your standard for yourself. You know, think of yourself as, as the Lord itself or the creator, because he is inside of all of us. So whatever you're doing, he's right there looking over your shoulder, scrutinizing you. You know, when you got to answer for all those bad things you did at the gate or whatever, that type of thing, you know, if you want to go that far with it. But it's simply a matter of caring. Yeah, it's just a matter of caring. And caring enough about the people around you to want to do your best, to actuate yourself. Yeah, actuate. This is from, this is Dan DeRider. He's got a long lead. I'll put this on and we'll go see the new baby. Here we go. What? Yeah, we'll go see the new baby. Let's go see. Yeah, let's go see. Okay, there's is that is that Ariel or Haniel? So we got Haniel up there. One of them's on the nest. Soto's, I see ya. Got my lavenders, but in there. There's a baby. Where's that baby at, Mama? We got a baby pigeon in there. I can just see his head poking out. Yeah, that's Daddy, Max. And then Mama's up there. That's Mildred. Yeah. So we got a baby. Yeah, I'm very excited because so far I've had them all die. Yeah, they all died so far. Oh, yeah! And the thing is, the thing is, about the journaling, and, and making a list and the personal inventory and all that and the reflections, taking control. You're captain on a ship. You're captain. And everybody that's not captain is learning from you because someday they want to be captain. It's cool to be up there driving a ship. Yeah, everybody. So their source of confidence is a product of your confidence. You see? Now, if I go to your place and we're working there, I can see a lot of what's got to be done, but you're holding the checkbook, you see? You're you're occupied with the specific things you want done because of the money. So, if you don't think about exactly what you want to do and get the list, to confide in. I'm of no use. But 
a source of comfort for your codependency. In most cases, people, uh, we're all codependent. Yeah, we are codependent. That can be bad, that can be good. Yeah. So, for me to have confidence to come there and feel good about what I'm doing, what I'm getting paid, uh, how it's getting done, the quality, I can't do that unless you do this. Yeah. If you don't have your ducks in a row, I can't come shoot them for you. I love shooting, but I can't shoot them until you put them in a row. Yeah, and that comes from your organization, your corporation. Yeah, you're forced to be handling money. I'm always handling money. Yeah, I had it. So I went to the Walmart yesterday. Julie wanted to go to the Walmart to get some medicine, which I need bad. I feel a lot better, but I was, I couldn't even walk. My knee was was hurting, my whole leg was asleep and numb. Uh, my monitor backed up. What are they feeding the babies? The babies are eating um, uh, what's called uh, pi pigeon milk. The, the, the mother and the father both make it in their crop and they feed the babies pigeon milk. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I got these, uh, I always go to the clearance aisle at Walmart. And yesterday, they had a bunch of black powder stuff for some, uh, black powder 50 caliber mag uh, powder pellets, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. But I got these screws, two and a half inch white screws. They're uh, T25s, but I paid $4 for them. 73 screws for four bucks. Excellent deal. And then they had a whole shit ton of these 18 gauge, 1,000 count nails, finished nails. I got inch and a quarter brad nails, 5,000 of them, two bucks a head. So for 10 bucks, I got 5,000 nails. Made in Taiwan. I'd rather give Taiwan my money than China. Yeah. So that was great. Great deal. So yeah, so yeah, the, the pigeons are, are interesting. Um, they, they both make the milk. That's how the whole breeding thing, the, the mother and the father, they'll court, the dad will walk around her and do circles and dance and clock and, and fluff his neck out and stuff and they'll kiss. And when they're kissing, they're tasting each other's crop milk. Yeah, when they, when they kiss. And then they, they, they'll go through it. I watched them, I watched them do the, I call it the bird dance. They did the bird dance three times one day an hour and a half yeah so i don't know how many babies are in there because i don't want to disturb them too much but i saw them feeding one and i uh, looked looked real good so i'm very excited about that yeah and i got them a special treat i got sunflower hearts at the uh at the uh what was it farming family farming home yeah, so I got sunflower hearts at Family Farm and Home. Let's see what else was on my list. Um, oh, yeah, the aviary. I got two of them out in the aviary. So I got the aviary built and the garage all cleaned up, ready for action. And uh, Oh, getting bombarded with thoughts and things. I'm looking back at my notes here to see if there's something else important I was supposed to talk about. Mm. Yeah, seeing problems. Which goes back to seeing problems, okay? Which goes back to leadership, organization, Starting from your journal. Your organization starts from your journal. All your organization. Yeah, your recipes. Maybe you're in the kitchen, cooking, you're making stuff up. You kind of keep track of what you're doing if you're doing something that you think is going to be fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, simple matter of going in and snapping lines to build a 
of, or out of bathroom in a, in a building, okay? If you don't snap any lines, you don't know where nothing goes. You gotta pull the tape and snap some lines. Okay, well, pull the tape and you snap some lines on the floor for the plumbing on the floor for the concrete. Well, you gotta think about snapping the lines on the ceiling. Yeah, that just that one, took one minute to sap, snap a line on the ceiling. But you didn't do that because you thought you were good enough to just plumb up on each end of the deal and throw the track in. Yeah, well, that'd be nice. Yeah, and it'd work out. Except for the plumbing going through the roof's got to be exact. Yeah, and if you don't snap the line, you're not going to put your vent pipe going up through the wall in the proper place through the ceiling, which throws the wall off. Yeah, so now the drywall sticks out. And uh, the joint's three yards forward of the plane. So, what do you do? Yeah, fur out the wall. Yeah, you, you shim the pipe over as far as it'll go. And then you gingerly fashion the drywall on there. Yeah, extra gingerly because the screws at the top are five eighths, five, five sixteenths hex heads sticking out. And if you don't drill them, away from the screws, it pops a drywall. Yeah, shouldn't be them, uh, see? So, it's all about organization. It causes extra work, yeah. Look, is this smart enough to see the problems coming? See the problems coming. All of a sudden, yeah, your kids aren't coming home when they're supposed to. Yeah, you correct them. Too much time on the video games and all that stuff, yeah. Um. I don't know what's going on. I still don't, I haven't chased down who's doing it, but I think my song won a contest and I'm sitting on another pile of money. Yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of money. This is Runaway Bride. Might be worth a fortune, I don't know. My big debut. It's my Jennifer Wilbanks. Let me figure out what I'm doing. I gotta refer to my notes. in a carpenter's group on Facebook and back to this thing. Everybody's reinventing the wheel. Yeah, nobody's getting educated. Carpentry symbols have been, symbols have been consistent for years and years and years and now we got guys in their 30s and 40s arguing about what the symbols are supposed to be, the hieroglyphics. It's pretty self-explanatory, really. Reference. Should we play the guitar? Kurt, are you out there? Yeah, maybe we'll whip out a see if we can whip out a magic song. Oh yeah, I gotta tell you about the war too. So Julie and I have been fighting for the past year, really. Uh, only she doesn't know it. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't know it. She didn't know until yesterday when I told her I won. Yeah. I didn't really win, though. I won the battle, but I didn't win the war. So I got this table upstairs. It's got the coffee pot on it. It's got the coffee, the filters, the sugar, the microwave, paper towels. 
every day. A couple times a day. She'll have a bowl of cereal. Most of the time, she'll have Rice Krispies. Well, she takes the sugar from the station to the prep counter where all the work is done. Cooking, typically. And she leaves it there. Well, that's one thing. But then, after she has the cereal, doesn't let the dog lick the bowl out, she brings the bowl in, if she brings the bowl in, and sets it on the counter by the sugar. So now the sugar's out of place, and the bowl's twice out of place because I didn't even rinse out or licked out. So now the, the milk is dried in the bottom of the bowl, and you can't do the dishes efficiently because now the bowl's got to soak because you can't scrub dry milk off the bowl. So, I finally, I, 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 I went in and I revamped the kitchen. I took all the cereal, cleared off the coffee station, I set the cereal on the counter by the microwave, cleaned it all, all the area all up though, and then I, I set a bowl on top of the microwave with a coffee cup, Daytona coffee cup, with some spoons and forks in it on the sill. And then, of course, the paper towels up there. The refrigerator's an arm's length away from the milk. So, now all I gotta do is deal with the bowl on the counter or in the house somewhere else. Yeah, it's like dealing with a 12 year old kid. Turning damn video games. Yeah, so this is my big debut. 2005. Rick Belkoffer. Danny playing rhythms. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I begged Danny to come to the show as sober as he could be because I knew that he was going to die soon. And uh, I wanted to record the show because uh, it might be our last show. And um, I called the radio station, or a, a newspaper, I called the Grand Rapids Press, and I had triggered them to send a journalist down and um, see the show and see if we could get in the paper and get some publicity. Because we were we were playing at a benefit to raise money for the police to help them get a new canine at the uh, DW Cassard Post downtown of Water Street, I think it was, uh, the 3023. So we played the show. We never practiced, never prepared for it. Just went down there and just played. And uh, newspaper shows up after we finish. And then we find out the whole party's going on downstairs. And there's a whole nother stage. And the whole crowd's down there watching some other band. So we're sitting up in the cafeteria with the old folks. who are actually complaining to turn the music down. Yeah, Danny made a comment about it. Yeah, we're playing in the cafeteria. But it was great. We loved it, and I cherish the recordings. And it's a memory that'll last until I can't remember. But, um, what was the point of the story? So we see if we can play a song. Let's see if we can play a song. I'm just putting the strings on Rhonda. Yeah, just putting the strings on Rhonda. Do I want the phaser? Do I want the phaser? I don't know. Yeah, let's practice the guitar. Yeah. No, I just want the chord out of the 
see if it's in tune. Did I have the battery on? See if we can play a song. Two years now I've been playing, and I'm I'm happy. Yeah, I'm high. I am. I'm I'm in the stratosphere, baby. Yeah, and knowing you won the game of life. Yeah, knowing you won, hearing the voice of the Creator. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing you don't have to pull the trigger. Yeah, you just got to make it a little longer. Yeah. Just a little longer. Anyway, stick it out. Hang in there. Start with your journal. This is your master plan. Yeah. When Tesla died, big money went in. CIA or authorities, they took this. Yeah, this was the value. This was the gold. Yeah. Get yours. Yeah, it's all right here. You got it. You can do it. Yeah, we can't win the war if nobody's keeping notes. Where's the rest of the people keeping notes? Yeah. Know who your teammates are. I fly these flags. 
There's identification. Yes, I'm the guy. You got a problem? I'm the guy. Peace, love, you know who cares. I'm crazy old Matt Zach. Crazy enough to be the change. That's right. Be the change.